Hello everybody, welcome to Super League action. We've got Diomed with his Orcs versus Call Troop with his Humans. You can see the teams there, plenty of Guard and Mighty Blow and Frenzy and stuff on both teams. Uh, please, if you enjoy this uh, video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And also, please tell us in the comments, would, would you have crisps in a sandwich? Very interesting. Very interesting question from Steve there. We see Call Troop here, he's set up in a deep rule of five. Or uh, Anchor, if you're a bonehead podcast enjoyer very deep i think that's a terrible idea it loses um you know pretty much just it loses any responsivity right and any chance to disrupt the cage formation and uh the cold trip always does it i just think it's bad there you go and okay deep deep kick too far away for mr throw And, and now in my, in my game, I'll see. I'll be honest, right? Uh, he couldn't reach if if it was even tighter in, right? What I did was in my in my game versus Strider, I put him back here, so he could actually pick it up if it went in the end zone, even. And uh, and it did go in the end zone twice. Just just saying, you know, just throwing that out there. But yeah, Mr. Throw, so slow. Yeah, all men's LOS. I probably should have done all men's LOS uh, in my game actually as well. I, I went one square down and then. And like I shouldn't be, obviously I was not afraid of a perfect defence, right? So if you're not afraid of a perfect defence, you should um, you should put everyone on the LOS. So there you go. Nope. Get a removal, finally. A removal versus an Armour 8 team. Well, that should be expected, shouldn't it? <laughs> that should be expected to remove Armour 8 players. If you haven't seen my game versus the Wood Elves yet, <laughs> you'd be forgiven for thinking <laughs> that that's a statistical impossibility, but uh, never mind. Right, let's, let's see what's happening. I'm, I'm going to stop now. Let's just focus on this game. So he's just screening up a little. Oh, yeah, okay. so using the guard from the uh, Olga there. This is a fine play to hit, right? Doesn't really. I mean, I guess m maybe he could have like put in the guards there, and he could have blitzed the big one, and then left the uh, strength three in contact with like three guarders. That would have been probably like maybe he's a bit safer than like you know the ogre, uh, the ogre just about to get smashed by the big one. It's uh, not really ideal, is it? You know, it's so, like this is a very easy, just instant two D hit. It's exactly what he sets up. So, he's probably going to mighty blow this guard. No, he's not going to mighty blow this guard. Okay. Oh, he's going to surf this guy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. But this is, uh, this is, this is a long way, isn't it? Was that a GFR? Was he here? One, two, three, four, five, six. But yeah, he would have surfed him. I, I guess it was worth surfing him, yeah. I didn't even realise he was in a position to be surfed. I wouldn't expect it to be possible, right? I guess that's... Something that if I was playing, I would have noticed, but watching, you just, you're not as switched on, are you? And you just don't expect somebody to be surfable. But he was surfable. He was not surfed. And now the frenzy gets mighty blowed. There you go. Now, nothing is uh, surfable this turn. The ogre comes in. I mean, the problem is, again, the ogre can just be instantly 2D'd, right? This time by Mighty Blow. That's not... Not great. Not great to have your ogre instantly 2 I mean, there is a bit of... There's an element of... Uh, of... Like, twat magnet. But at the end of the day, it's... You know, you've got... You've got block and Mighty Blow. That's a pretty good hit to take. I don't like just sending him in to get... Knock down every turn. Personally, it looks like he's not actually hitting him, does it? Oh no, maybe, maybe, maybe he's just wandering him. I don't know. I'm pretty bamboozled. Beats him off. <laughs> oh, follows. And then goes for the dodge for like. To make it a 2D, I guess. I guess he was going to dodge away and then bring the. Uh, if it worked, maybe bring over the big one to make it a 2D. 
Or maybe just one DM off and leave that out. big in there. I don't know. So yeah, he found, now finally the uh, the ogre pays off. It does doesn't get a hit over here? Like it's hard, right? You you need so many players to hit people as humans versus orcs. But you can't. It's hard just to. I hate just keep giving away the hits. Like especially versus the bigger, right? At least the blitzer was a little bit harder for him to get the assists. Like I would have still hit him, but like versus the uh, big and it's just like instant two D. I feel like you have to use. Your ogre a bit more like uh, carefully. I guess you can argue that you know because he's taking up three players every turn, he's kind of stopping the forward movement, which he is, right? But then also, it it's taken him four turns to get up here anyway. You know, just because the kick was so deep. Turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. So he hasn't really had to get in the way too much anyway. Ah, I guess the follow up hit. No chain though, is there? It would have been nice to have done. I know he could have. Oh no, it doesn't, doesn't work. Disregard. Errata, errata. <laughs> Good uphill. I wouldn't even hate the uphill, really. Would have been a score. <laughs> That's pretty funny. More redam. Hello, Torak. Chill fall over again, yeah. <laughs> Don't know if any of you know I used to have a strength for witch elf in a in era BP. <laughs> it was literally the best player ever. Honestly. This is nice, isn't it? He's got his he's got his guard biggins out in front. I do actually quite like four guard biggins. If I was to change my team. If I could go again, I would change my team, I would drop the ogre, uh, the troll even, and I would make the mighty bow blitzer that Diamed has, I'd make a guard blitzer. Um, and then you've got like 30k left, whoops, 1d, gets a pal, and he's gone like uh, two assistant coaches and like a dedicated fan or a cheerleader or something, I don't know. Or three assistant coaches, I don't know, but um, I'm sure you get 30k left. So you could, rather than having a reserve lineman, have two goblins. Which would be interesting. Oh, cheeky cars. Apple comes in and fails. Which was, you know, completely reasonable, right? A guard. Guard blitzer is exactly who you want on Apple. And now there's a gaping hole in the defense. Right at the perfect time, turn six. Lovely stuff for Diamond. Oh. Rerolls because he wants the power to get the glitter in as an additional cage corner. <laughs> Way, Christopher. Way. I mean this is this isn't unexpected, right? Humans, a team with mass AV9 plus, you would expect them to get completely outbashed by orcs. So that honestly oh so this has done that to get an uphill on the ball. Okay. That's not bad, is it? Oh, it's a 3D uphill though, because there's two guards. It's pretty bad. 
Yeah, if it was a 2D uphill, it would have been pretty good, wouldn't it? But with a 3D uphill, I'm not sure it was worth it. I guess he stuck him on the old one. This is decent, isn't it? This is decent. I'm just to come around, get a bit of a uh, bit of stuff in the way here. But he has got his guard biggins to maybe do something there. But a lot blockless. Like that's that's obviously that's the price you pay, right? With her, Dave always got his uh, two block biggins. But if you just go guard biggins, then. Uh, it's certainly a little bit risky. I'm making these punches. Kind of like one man short, isn't he, from the ideal cage you'd like. So yeah, I guess he's going to have to screen it here. A lovely power, that, isn't it? Doesn't follow? No, it does follow. Yeah, I don't see. You want to follow the tag, the uh, ogre. And then the frenzy assures the Blackhawk's freedom to uh, complete the screen. I didn't like that direction, honestly, because the problem is if you pushed him again, he could have... Uh, I did not like that I did not like that push direction from Diamond there. Look, if, if he pushes him here and pushes him twice, he's fine, right? But on, if you push him up there for the second hit and then you just push him on the second one, he can block him and free the Ogre, who can then base him. Obviously, if you base with the Ogre... That's a it's a big problem. So yeah, I feel like he pushed the wrong direction there. But gets away with it, gets the pow, and gets the removal in fact. <laughs> GFI's into an eye cage. Full eye cage. Interesting. He can he can like he can easily just uphill, right? Oh, he gets the guard in. But <laughs> it doesn't make any difference because he could have just hit him from the front. <laughs> but, I mean, at least he's got him through now, but could have done the uphill first, couldn't he? Yeah. So all of Call Troop's rerolls have gone on defense. Um, so that's obviously impacting his throw teammate chances. It's still a GFI to score. D hit in, lovely. Does he 2D? He's got two rerolls. So in the old days, you wouldn't make this block, right? Because if you dub scold, your reroll for the turn would be gone. Whereas now, it's adding such little uh, difficulty. I, uh, ooh, um, maybe you don't take the non mighty blow one. I think the mighty blow one is is really, you know, undoubtedly good enough to do. Um, but there you go. Gets in no problem. So yeah, no, you know, Call Troop should he have uh, should he have spent all of his rerolls trying to defend? That's the thing, right? He could have had three rerolls for this one turn with the ogre and the halfling. I don't like just flat across the back here. Um, I prefer like uh, you know five across and then like three in front, so you get a bit of a like a more solid catchment area in the uh, in the centre. Treacherous trapdoor is literally the side. Of so here's here's a very subtle thing, isn't it? This is a very subtle, but that this makes this means that you should be attacking down this side if possible, because you know everything's equal, right? Everything's equal. All things being equal, you should be going down this side because if the uh, treacherous trapdoor, you know, like if he throws from here, it might scatter onto the trapdoor, right? So you need to, uh, so a yeah, very, a very subtle, a very subtle thing there, but it's just technically correct to go down that side. Oh, he makes the handoff. Oh, he was one square short. He was one square short. Flip me. Like obviously his reroll wouldn't have helped in that situation at all. But 
Makes you wonder, right? Imagine if he'd, uh, imagine if he'd gone one further, right? And then, like, you know, failed the landing. Like, how much would he have maybe regretted not keeping a reroll? Finally, Diomed benches the uh, benches the thrower. Finally, <laughs> so many times he's played the thrower on defense, and I've hated it every single time. And now he's finally not played the throw on defense. Love it. Yes. Good point, Marado. Very good point. Very good point. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, that is just better with an ogre, right? With, with a halfling, there, there's... There's... You probably want... With halflings, you probably want one on the line and one behind. No... No, because you've got to, you've got to, you've got to declare it. So in Blood Bowl two, you didn't have to declare it, right? So if you took root, it would have been okay. You could have moved. You could have moved the other one. <laughs> Whereas now, um, like if an ogre goes bonehead, he can't throw it, whether he moves or not. Whereas a tree man, if they root, they can't move and throw, can they? So with a tree. There's a there's there's an argument for doing it the way. Well, no, there's not because you could still have him on the LOS, couldn't you? No, it's just wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. <laughs> Disregard, errata, errata. Ignore everything I said. But look, there's things happening on the pitch. Woo! Yeah, blood bowl. Right. Completely, completely ignore that entire entire paragraph that I just talked about. Right. So you know we've got orcs. He hasn't mashed in as heavily as I did against uh, Call Troop. But he has uh, mashed in a decent amount, right? Get the guards in. Stay away from the ogre, because obviously that's his strength 5, easy 2D. So you just try and put three on three on that guy, and then try and monster these as much as possible. Of course, Diamond doesn't have the troll, right? I was able to put the troll on his ogre, whereas... Uh, Diamond does not have that luxury. Not quite as, not quite as bullyish as uh, my build. Mm. Oh, big, big AV break. This looks a bit like an overcommit from Diamond, maybe, but I think that's pretty harsh. I think he had to he had to go up there, and you know now they're moving five, he can easily swing around the other side. Oof. Yeah, didn't it uh, didn't hit with the uh, frenzy there? Oh, because he's surfing. Okay, quite reasonable. Yeah, I mean not reasonable for Call Troop to leave his guy surfable, of course. But uh, quite reasonable for Diamed to give up a bit of position on this side to get that surf. <laughs> it's funny because this is where we watch this live on stream, not on YouTube, obviously. Um, but this this was on at the same time as a different match. I think it was Strider versus Anarian was on at the same time as this match. And then this is where we started watching it. And I did think it was odd that there was two orcs over this side of the pitch. And obviously that's why, because this guy getting surfed. And so it, that stun is actually brutal, right? Without that stun, this looks a lot better. But I, I feel like the humans have to go down the right-hand side here. You know, um, you can either hand it off to this guy and get even further. Or you just, you know, base base up the people who can hit you and just potato off. I just think you have to. I think there's no there's no choices the humans here. Because like the, the, the those two players over here, and all of the uh, all of the orcs over there, like the, all the biggins, they're all on this half of the pitch, right? 
three big ones on this half, two blitzers on this half. Seems really good to make a move down this side. <laughs> but instead, <laughs> he goes here into just an instant two dice on the ball. Um, literally, he could have just blitzed instantly with two dice, but instead he's made it a blockless block here to get three dice on the ball. Which is pretty reasonable, because he doesn't have tackle. But he does use a reroll, so he's down to one now, Diamond. These blockless blocks really stacking up and hurting him. Does get the pow. Oh, gets the, gets the scatter catch. Right, so he, there's, there was a couple of options here. Uh, one was to like chain him up there and then just go potato off down here, but the problem is the biggins could catch you. So I much prefer trying to get this catcher and run off the other side. Nice injury. That kind of sucks that if it's a push it's not good enough, but it's good that he gets the power, so I think it was worth doing. I hate this move here. I hate I hate this move. And I... Uh, I also hate the follow here. I, you cannot follow that, right? You have to keep this guy tagged. So I would have had this, this catcher tagging this lineman, and I just wouldn't have followed with the ogre. But instead, both players are free. Now with one re-roll, Diamond is not going to try and make this a three dice, is he? Because it's uh, it's two GFIs to make it a to get the assist, and then two GFIs to hit. But yeah, I mean, he literally could have just not followed there, and then this catcher could have come around here, and like you just got to go all in on it, right? Like, okay, maybe this catcher helps the failure state if you don't if you fail the four three. But at the end of the day, it's uh, if you fail the four three, you've lost anyway. So, uh, you know, I think sometimes you've got to you've got to just commit to the uh, to doing things. Gets the two T double skulls. <laughs> well, there isn't really any support right now, but he can uh, he can blitz and burst things. There's this kind of irrelevant block here, which was a real shame. Oh no, it was a blitz. Okay, so he, this was the blitz. And a GFI. And that's... Hmm. That was really unlucky, wasn't it? I thought I thought that was a line. I thought, why has he done that? But it's it's yellow, it's a blitzer. Um, and he's got a GFI here as well. And he... Dodge there instead of just blocking with the uh, ogre, right? The ogre could have just punched this, could have punched the mighty blow guy, and he'd been five, six, seven, and this guy would have been three, four, five, six. So he could have just punched, punched, well, tried to punch the uh, blitzer, and then that's a one in nine turnover. Whereas the dodge is a one in three, and obviously he could use a team reroll on that, but that's still just not as good as just punching him. So this should have just been a punch on this uh, blitzer rather than dodge, but. See, like, it's funny enough, because it, now it's cost him a re-roll, that, whereas if he'd, uh, you know, maybe if he'd done the, the better moves last turn, like, this catcher would have been around there, he could have, uh, he could have saved a re-roll, and uh, maybe he's had a stronger stall. But, you know, like, Diamond still has to try and break the stall here, so this is not an easy, like, it's not the easiest turn, right? Like, Diamond still wants, like, Diamond's got three turns, which isn't super easy to score in his Orcs. So he really needs to not have a two turn. He, he like he basically has to force Coltrip in this turn. As I say, Coltrip could have been basing a big one, and he could have, you know, stopped other players moving down. And wow, all the 
all the both downs this time with the Blitzer. And this does not really look stallable now, does it? I think he will just have to dodge. Dodge and score. No one is running Dells, no meat. Kind of surprisingly, right? No, no Dells, no Undead, no Underworld, no Lizards. Like there were, there were <laughs> of the teams that I thought the, were the best. People only chose Orcs. Quite bizarrely. I mean, to be fair, I thought Orcs are the best, so I guess that kind of makes sense, right? If you think Orcs are the best, you choose Orcs, even if they're only, like, you know, even if Dark Elves and Lizards, etc., are all good choices, you still just choose the one that you think is the best, don't you? Like, it just has to be 1% better for everybody to choose that thing. rubbish Christopher to be honest <laughs> because then there's just too much luck oh wow so he puts in the reroll there on, on the first turn of the drive because he kind of has to right because he hasn't even tried to pick up the ball yet so that's his one reroll gone flip me yeah it's really surprising like there's there's lots of good things there's, lo there's lots of good teams like Dark Hills are a perfectly good team and saw lizards and saw underworld and saw undead they're all perfectly viable um so it's really weird really weird the orcs were the old, you know the only one i guess the thing was sol and olivier were always going to choose just use skaven and in Aaron and strider were just going to use wood elves right oh and that's a 1d in reroll instantly gone i think he's trying to open up something to try and get this catcher through but like he's got the power and it hasn't really done much for him so you've got to say that was a mistake eh? it's got to be a mistake to use your last reroll a first action monday Just stay in the way. Stay in the way. <laughs> that comment for anybody who doesn't know is in reference to uh, <laughs> Blood Bowl Three Discord, <laughs> which honestly it's a val it's a valid concern, right? People, you know, in, in progression environments like the ladder, there should be more progression. Faster progression. I'm all for faster progression. Uh, in any environment, actually. Uh, people like building teams in Blood Bowl. Oh, look at this! So you had to do this, right? Because it was a three-turn score. He just had to make all these rolls this turn. And he's uh, he's made the pass, the catch, and the four plus three plus dodges. Unbelievable. But now no re-roll. For Call Troop, and I think he just had to not use the reroll, right, and, until this turn. And as it happened, it probably wouldn't have made much difference. He goes for the dodge, which was a 3 plus, and he didn't really have anything better than that, right? He could have, um, he could have done this one dice block um, from the Blitzer, which is a 2 plus, which would have had the upside of if he powers him, it frees up both players. Right, but it's a 1 in 6 instead of a 1 in 9. So it's actually worse, right? It's actually worse. But not if he had a reroll. Um, so, you know, and then this way, he goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And he, so he has to GFI, right? So doing it his way, he has a 1 in 9 and then a 1 in 6 guaranteed. If you do it this way, you, you could have had a 1 in 6 um, that was 50% to reduce, to, to take away this 1 in 6 chance. And then, so if he does that, 
then he's got this guy to be the assist, this guy does the blitz, and then he's actually got recovery as well to like completely slid. Well, no, he doesn't, or just an extra player, he doesn't need to recover because if he knocks him over, it's done. So he could have moved this guy first or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, he could have just done something. He could have moved him first anyway, right? And he could have just dodged both. Maybe that would have been an idea. Just move this guy here, whatever he did, and then do two dodges to hit him. Um. But yeah, I, I, I like the idea of doing this one day, but now that I think about it more, I don't know. I think the important thing was Coltrip just had to save a reroll, right? Because uh, Diamond got really lucky to make that, that pass catch and dodge through. Like, that was that was actually just an insanely lucky dodge through um, with no rerolls available. So Diamond got super, super lucky to roll those dice without a reroll and uh call troop instantly failed his one in nine so you know he could have he could have got out of that with the draw call troop uh, pretty unlucky to lose in the end but you know congratulations to diamed he did the right plays got the win commiserations to call troop and uh thanks for watching everybody don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic